Grace, mercy and peace to you from God our Father and our Lord and Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. A few words from the Gospel today. And when his parents saw him, they were astonished. And his mother said to him, Son, why have you treated us so? Behold, your father and I have been searching for you in great distress. And he said to them, Were you looking for me? Did you not know that I must be in my father's house? He went down with them and came to Nazareth and was submissive to them. And Jesus increased in wisdom and in stature and in favour with God and man. Let us pray. Lord, teach us your word. Your word is truth. Amen. Losing a child would have to be one of the most scariest events that a person or a parent could experience. Even if a child is lost for a short term length of time can make a parent fear the worst. Imagine losing a child for a number of days and how the mind would race over all the evil possibilities. Think of that child in Western Australia that went missing for a couple of weeks. Think of the families that have lost children mysteriously, never to see them ever again. And the relief of those who, after losing their child, take that child back in their arms after they have been feared, missing and dead. Picture Mary and Joseph racing around in confusion after they'd lost Jesus and after returning to Jerusalem looking for three days before they found him. They, like any parents, would have been fearing the worst while Jesus was missing. But Jesus was not missing. And he adds to the parents' confusion when they find him sitting amongst the teachers in the temple for three days, these parents were taught, tortured and tortured, churning in a wish-wash of emotions. Then they find Jesus completely at peace. Mary and Joseph were beside themselves in astonishment and distress. How would you react if your child had lost, been lost, only to find them completely unconcerned about three days' separation. Now we could try and attribute blame to Mary and Joseph for not providing a safe place for Jesus, especially since they had gone a day's journey, not noticed he was missing, but despite not knowing exactly what occurred, we only have a limited um, text of what was going on. It was custom for groups to travel together, big large groups to protect themselves from foes that would come and attack them. And somehow Jesus was overlooked in amongst the travels, the travellers and family and friends. Nevertheless, Jesus was in the safest place possible. He was in his Father's presence. Now let's rewind back to the Garden of Eden where God is walking in the cool of the evening, a completely different scenario. He's walking in the cool of the evening looking for Adam and Eve. A very different picture. God is neither confused nor distressed. However, Adam and Eve, unlike Jesus, were distressed and afraid and hid themselves from God. Two very different images. A boy happily at rest in God's presence and the other, a couple guilty, hiding and covering themselves in shame. One, parents frantically looking for a son and the other, the father of creation walking in the cool of the evening, looking for his first created son and daughter. Jesus Christ is the new Adam, 
born into humanity as the Son of Man and as the Son of God. There was no guilt in him when he was found. He responds to Mary's distress and rebuke. Why were you looking for me? Did you not know that I must be in my Father's house? Literally, Jesus says, why were you seeking me? Why were you worshipping me with worry? I was in the things of my Father. Unlike Adam and Eve acting like two guilty kids caught in the act, Jesus was not hot not into mischief with his father's things. He was not hiding from them, nor was he turning his back on his father, as did Adam and Eve who tempted, were tempted by the devil and left cowering in naked shame when God came looking for them. Two very different things. Outcomes arise from these two events. Adam and Eve were thrown out of Eden and lived under the curse of sin in the productivity or the confused productivity of environment and humanity's reproduction. But Jesus, on the other hand, he went back to that destitute village of Nazareth in full submission to his parents. We hear Jesus increased in favour, in wisdom, and in stature and in favour with God and man. Jesus grew up. He increased in wisdom and in favour as both the Son of God and as the Son of Man. He not only grew in favour with God, but he also grew in favour as the Son of God. Here we can picture Jesus' submission in a whole different light than that of our human submission. We best get an understanding of his submission when we consider how we react when we are treated without respect or if we are treated like children or as inferior. When we are perceived that we are being treated with contempt, second rate, we want to snap back at the condescender to regain our position, our title. And no doubt Jesus too would have been sinned against as a youth and as a young man by his family and friends. We don't hear much about it, we don't hear anything about it, in fact, other than this story. But that would have happened. He was living amongst sinners. But as Jesus grew in wisdom of humanity, sin and his divinity, his wisdom grew in levels of both generosity and steadfast love toward both God the Father and compassion and steadfast love towards the sinfulness of his earthly father Joseph and his family. and indeed all his brothers and sisters in the family of Adam. This is the man from Nazareth who returned to Jerusalem in full submission to God and man as the Son of God and as the Son of Man. Jesus' wisdom and favour seemed to be dashed at Jerusalem when on returning on Palm Sunday in victory riding on a donkey, within a week was cursed by the crowd and hung on the cross. For Jesus' wisdom, we can be truly thankful. As God's children, we are called into the wisdom and the stature, the growth of Jesus Christ. As we grow, we are called into a deeper understanding of our sinfulness, the sinfulness around us and our need for forgiveness and the need to forgive others. You and I are called to be like the growing Jesus of Nazareth. 
as we learn of our sonship through our adoption as God's children. Because Jesus grew in wisdom, we are free to grow in his holy, chosen and beloved character. This is a character of peace, knowing that God is God. Because we are saved sinners, we can put on love. That is, we can put on Jesus, Christ Jesus. We are free to put on compassionate hearts, kindness, humility, weakness and patience. Just as Jesus was all of these things in wisdom as he carried your sin to the cross with the sin of the world. When you struggle to put on Jesus, and we all do, Pray for the Holy Spirit to clothe you in Jesus. Pray for deliverance into holiness. Being led from temptation into God's kingdom. And the will to forgive as God has forgiven you and indeed has forgiven us in heaven. Pray for the Holy Spirit to give you Jesus as your daily bread, giving you the hunger to worship in your Father's house. We no longer have to hide in fear of God like Adam and Eve, nor like Joseph and Mary do we have to go searching for Jesus in great distress. As forgiven sinners, God now temples in us, in all of us, collectively as his church. Now we are free to clothe ourselves in him. Amen. Come, Lord Jesus, and be our guest. You are our holy bread, and we pray that through you, your word and your church, the world may be clothed and fed. Amen.